Hello and welcome to the life cycle assessment video. In today's video, we are going to go through the journey and life cycle assessment of fresh milk. Here are the contents of the video. First, we are going to see a brief introduction to fresh milk. Then, we are going to learn about the life cycle of fresh milk. Next, it is about the environmental impact of the production of fresh milk. Finally, we are going to talk about the mitigation steps and the overall conclusion. What is fresh milk? Fresh milk comes in several forms including full fat about 3.8% milk fat on average, low fat less than 1.5% milk fat, skim no more than 0.15% milk fat, modified, flavored milk, and buttermilk. Cow's milk is known to contain many nutrients. The major constituents of cow's milk are water 87.4% and milk solids 12.6%, including varying concentrations of fat and water soluble. Vitamins, minerals, trace elements, and salts. The principal carbohydrate in milk is lactose. Next, is about the history of dairy cattle. The wild ancestors of modern cows were called aurochs. According to Procon's historical timeline of cow's milk, aurochs were first domesticated 8,000 to 10,000 years ago. They evolved into two types of domestic cattle, Vos indicus and Vos taurus. Vos indicus is a breed of cattle that are more suited to tropical climates, while Vos taurus are adapted to temperate environments. Moving on to modern cow history. Modern cows once ranged throughout Asia, Europe, and North Africa. English and Northern European farmers may have been the first or among the first to begin drinking cow's milk. It's possible that the first aurochs were milked 8,000 to 10,000 years ago in two different parts of the world. Next, we are going to see the six stages of the fresh milk life cycle. The first stage is the feed production stage where the cattle are fed with arable crops, minerals, and proteins. The second stage is distribution where the cow milk is transported to a processing facility. The third stage is the milk processing stage where the fresh milk will go through the pasteurization and filling process. Then, the next stage is retail where the processed fresh milk is refrigerated in the store. The next stage is the consumer stage, where customers bought the milk from the store to their home and refrigerate it. The final stage is the end of life for fresh milk where the disposal of the packaging takes place. A cow has to have a variety of feed components to ensure she remains healthy and can produce a strong calf and top quality milk. Her rations need to be adjusted according to her age and the stage of her breeding or milking cycle. Dairy cows often eat as much as 46 kilograms of rations a day, made up of a balanced combination of forage, grain, mineral supplements, and protein-rich feeds such as soybean meal. Forage is the basis for a cow's diet. This includes pasture grass in the spring and summer months, or it can be chopped grass or silage. As for storing stage, milk storage vats or silos are refrigerated and come in various shapes and sizes. Milk is usually stored on the farm at 4 degrees Celsius, or colder, for no more than 48 hours. Vats and silos are agitated to make sure that the entire volume remains cold and that the milk fat does not separate from the milk. After the milk has been collected, storage vats and stainless steel pipes are thoroughly cleaned before the farmer milks again. In the transportation stage, milk is collected from the farm every 24 or 48 hours. The tankers that are used have special stainless steel bodies which are heavily insulated to keep the milk cold during transportation to the processing factory. Milk tanker drivers have accredited milk graders, qualified to evaluate the milk prior to collection. Tanker drivers grade and if necessary, reject milk, based on temperature, sight, and smell. As for the processing stage, whole fresh milk, once approved for use, is pumped into storage silos where it undergoes pasteurization, homogenization, separation, and further processing method. Here the milk passes through a very small gap in a homogenizer, which breaks up the larger fat droplets. Homogenization prevents the fat droplets from rising to the surface and forming a layer of cream in the container milk needs to be heat treated to be safe to drink. So it's quickly heated and then cooled in a heat exchanger, which kills harmful bacteria that can cause disease. 
It also reduces the number of microorganisms that can spoil the milk's taste and shorten its shelf life. This pasteurization has only minor effects on the milk's nutritional value. Pasteurized milk needs to be kept cool to stay safe. If the milk is heated to an even higher temperature, the more heat-resistant spores are also killed. Then the milk will stay safe, unopened, for several months, without needing to be kept in a refrigerator. In retail and consumer stages, fresh fluid milk should be stored at temperatures below 4C and should not be stacked high in the display cases. Milk will begin to develop signs of spoilage, including sour odor, off flavor, and curdled consistency should be taken from the store and quickly placed in your refrigerator at home so that the temperature does not rise. Do not return unused milk that has been sitting out to its original container where it could contaminate the remaining milk. Milk should not be left out at room temperature. As for the end of life stage, unopened milk generally stays good for 5 to 7 days past its listed date, while opened milk lasts at least 2 to 3 days past this date. Fresh milk is generally packaged in one of three container types which is plastic, paper, or glass. All of these types of packaging is recyclables and some of them are biodegradable. Moving on to the environmental impact on the production of fresh milk. In the 20th century, innovations in pasteurization, refrigeration, and the manufacturing of powdered, or dried, milk led to milk products becoming a household staple. Today milk, butter, cheese, yogurt, ice cream, and other dairy products are ubiquitous, consumed by more than 6 billion people worldwide. But as demand for dairy grows, so does its impact. There is about a 30% growth in global milk production from 2005 to 2015. A total of 909 million tons amount of milk was produced by cows, buffalo, and other livestock worldwide in 2017. India produces the most, about 20% of the world's supply. The states, which produces the most cow's milk, is next, at 12%. About 2% of the dairy industry's share of total United States greenhouse gas emissions. From farm to consumer, including waste. While emissions from the global dairy sector increased by 18% between 2005 and 2015, the state's dairy sector reduced its emissions by 5% overall. Total of 17 gallons amount of manure and urine produced daily by a dairy cow. Improperly managed, manure emits greenhouse gases, pollutes water and air, and damages wildlife habitats. Properly managed, it can fertilize crops and produce energy. In estimate, there are 278 million total dairy cows in the world. Feeding the U.S. dairy herds 144 gallons of water is used to produce one gallon of milk in the U.S. More than 93% of that water is used to grow feed for dairy cattle. 46 kilograms is the total feed eaten per day by a United States dairy cow. About 46 kilograms of feed are eaten per day by United States cows. A total of 545 liters of water is used to produce 4 liters of milk in the United States. More. Then 93% of that water is used to grow feed for dairy cattle. Roughly, about 9% amount of available United States crop land is used to grow feed crops for dairy cows which brings up a total of about 34.1 million acres. There are about 9.3 million dairy cows in the states alone. Moving on to the mitigation steps and conclusion. There are four suggested mitigation steps to the problems issued. Firstly, is by increasing milk production per cow. Capper ETAL, 2009, Cross and ETAL, 2011. Then, increasing productive life spans of cattle and reducing replacement rates. Liang and Cabrera, 2015. After that, through reducing the body weights of cows. Capper and Caddy, 2012. Then, through increasing the lactation period and reducing the calving frequency, hence reducing replacement rates. Lehman ETAL, 2014. All mitigation steps point towards reduced maintenance and pregnancy requirements per kg of milk, due to keeping fewer cows for the same amount of milk, fewer young stock to replace cows, fewer calves, or less body weight per productive cow. 
Drink your milk? There are benefits to drinking a glass of fresh milk. Supply quality protein. Milk is a rich source of protein, with just one cup containing 8 grams. Protein is necessary for many vital functions in your body, including growth and development, cellular repair, and immune system regulation promote bone health. Drinking milk has long been associated with healthy bones. This is due to its powerful combination of nutrients, including calcium, phosphorus, potassium, protein, and vitamin K2, able to turn to versatile ingredients. Moreover, it's a versatile ingredient that can be easily added to your diet. Aside from drinking milk, try these ideas for incorporating it into your daily routine such as smoothies, oatmeal, coffee and soups. However, dairy milk is not for everyone. Many people can't tolerate milk because they're unable to digest lactose, a sugar found in milk and dairy products. This has led to a wide variety of non-dairy milk alternatives, including almond milk, coconut milk, cashew milk, soy milk, hemp milk, oat milk, and rice milk.